Yeah, thanks very much. If I start then, so I'm Graham. I uh, work for Gopher. Gopher are a UK-based career company uh, operating all over the nation, and we provide the final mile element of the partnership. Hopefully you heard that. Nice. Um, my name is Matt. I am a digital product lead working for Lush. Hopefully you've heard of us. Um, we are now a global brand, um, 800 stores across the world. Um, and we're just uh, working with North America as well. But we work on cosmetics um, and all those bath bombs and all those products. Um, yeah, and I'm the product lead. Been with them for 11 years. Thanks, guys. Um, so I'm having uh, issues with my uh, with my clicker to progress the uh, to progress the slide. So hopefully they can move it. Can you move it on one, please? So you really are Chris Whitty. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, apparently. And back one, please. My slide. Okay, no worries. So. That, so just to kind of introduce myself, so I'm Tom Anastasi, I'm the Director of Sales for Northern Europe. Um, just to kind of give some insight into what, what Bring does. So we are a, a last mile uh, technology provider um, and like any other um, you know, great organization, we were founded in 2013 out of, a, uh, out of, a, out of an interesting idea where our founder was, was sitting one day, ordered a pizza and couldn't really understand why he couldn't track where that pizza was in an Uber-like experience before it turned up at his house. And uh, from there, you know, spawned a you know, fantastic idea where um, we, you know, there's been dramatic kind of changes as, as we went through COVID, really changing customers' expectations. Um, now we're working with, you know, some of the largest industries, uh, com companies in the world, um, helping them to really redefine what customer experience um, looks like from a last mile perspective. Uh, could you progress the slide, please? Clicker's not behaving. So to, to kick off, I wanted to um, just talk a little bit about some, some industry trends. So we, we run what we call the Bring Barometer, um, where we interview in excess of 500 different enterprises uh, across the world. Um, what we found was that 99% of businesses over the next three years have an, an expectation to be able to, li to, to, to deliver a hyper-local service. Um, but what we found was that within the beauty industry was only kind of six out of, uh, out of 100, 6% of businesses were actually able to offer that service to, today. But the upside of that was, you know, there's a 20 to 30% increase in conversion rate if you're able to offer same day delivery. And actually then when we asked additional questions around, you know, would you be prepared to spend additional um, funds on, uh, you know, ask customers, would they be able to, to would they be open to spend additional money on, on same day delivery? 68% of those said that they would do. But this, you know, really comes with a challenge, right? Only 60, so 61% of businesses only give sort of um, tracking and visibility, um, same day tracking and visibility. 44% um, of businesses that, that we work with or we interviewed say that they work with kind of multiple different fulfillment technologies. Um, and then 49% of those state that they, they challenge the you know, travel time between pick up and drop off. Um, Matt, it'd be great to kind of get an insight from you on you know, some of the challenges that you've faced at Lush to, to kind of, and how you've overcome some of these challenges as well. Absolutely. I mean, when you look at those kind of statistics, I'd say, yeah, we probably have faced it. The, uh, the pandemic definitely did a number on us as a, um, a kind of a high street and bricks and mortar kind of retail group. Um, that's where most of our business comes from. Uh, the experiences that we offer in store and all of that engagement. Um, with the pandemic and the stores closed, a lot of our customers moved online, which was fantastic, um, and continued to purchase um, through our e-com platform. Um, and then when the stores kind of reopened in order to kind of provide additional services, we had a lot of local uh, solutions. So they were um, using kind of digital forms to f get customers to fill out information, um, request products that they might have in store, um, doing things like remote payments, doing things like organizing local couriers um, and kind of forging those relationships. But most of them were kind of operating independently. So um, kind of these challenges that you see here were really visible in terms of kind of that that order visibility, they wouldn't see it because it was all done manually. It was done via someone in a shop, 
filling information out and they would only get that if they got an email back. And so the kind of reliability of the whole system um, wasn't there. So then I think when we come out of, that, of the pandemic and now our shops are back open again, I think there was a real kind of energy there to, to look for improving the solution. Basically tackling these things head on, pr still providing those kind of same day options and click and collect and things like that, but doing it at a higher level. Excellent, thank you. Um, Graham, it'd be great to get some insight on, on what you've seen in these challenges within, within the new organisation as well. Yeah, I think what, what Matt said there is right. Obviously, all retailers are facing these challenges. I think it's that openness to try and overcome them and explore what your stores are capable of. Offering same day is um, a huge benefit that I'm sure we'll get into. But it's definitely worth trying to overcome the challenges. And I know obviously, you, you guys do a great job in supporting that. Um, because if you can overcome them and if you can get through these barriers, we know and have, we see on a day-to-day -day basis what those rewards are. Yep. So, yeah, I, I think that's, that's key. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think it's, you know, from what a lot of the other businesses we work with, it's kind of putting the, putting the customer at the, at the heart of, of, of what, everything that you're looking to build, right? And if, and if that leads to knock-on effects and increased revenue, then, then that's, that's fantastic. Yeah. But, but kind of making sure there's a focus around the customer and what their needs and requirements are. Absolutely, and I think especially kind of with Lush as well. So for our e-commerce and our fulfillment, we only have one centre, which is down in Poole in the south of England. So not exactly the best location for spreading across the whole of the UK. Um, and so working with kind of Bring and Gopher is all about centralising some of those processes. Our stores work really, really hard on a kind of a local basis, that being able to take things off them so they don't have to worry about some of these details allows them to keep focusing on that customer experience. Have you have you found that that's that that shift is 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 on an ongoing kind of basis, right? Yeah. So, so customers' expectations are, are changing yeah, consistently. Yeah, I, th I think so, and I think <coughs> it's for us as well. It's probably reaching new customers. Yeah, being so reliant on having people come into a shop, which is what we're all about—the physical demo, getting your hands in the water, getting it on your skin. It doesn't necessarily align itself with an e-com platform, yep. and so you're, you're starting to kind of lose on some of those that customer base. So by doing things like this, it's just increasing our potential. Mm. Yeah, yeah, and I'm guessing people are brought into the brand, the brand of Lush. Yeah. Right? So they don't want to go outside of that because that's they they like everything that you stand for as Absolutely. an organisation. Yeah, yeah, and we we obviously see that on a day to day basis. Every store across the UK. You know, building solutions for the many is really key, not just a few. So you mentioned your location on the South Coast, which is a challenge, obviously. Yeah. But actually, if it's done properly and if you tackle the challenges, then why not offer it everywhere to everyone if it's built correctly? So, yeah, I think um, it's an exciting time for, for store, for same day, um, moving forward. Excellent. So, um, Graham, I know this was a... Um a study that, that, that Gopher had put together. I, I, don't, I don't know if you wanted to, to elaborate on some of these, um, some of these key points you're able to, to find over you know, customers that you've spoken to in the past. Yeah, I'll certainly try. I mean, we, we try to tackle every industry and try to understand it as much as we can. We've done a, a huge amount of work in various retail subsectors, um, one of which was the DIY space recently that we worked on. Um, it's all about understanding what the reason is for same day. Does it add value? Is it useful? And once you understand what the why is, building the solution is kind of the easy bit. So what we noticed with the beauty brand, if you like, was actually massive customer base, you know, um, really forward thinking, social media, much more tech savvy than I. But yet the gratification of ordering was reasonably easy. Yep. But the speed to get the products in the hand is actually really quite slow. So there is definite scope and room there to elevate that overall experience. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I, as you touched on, about 6% six, six offer something, but actually 68% want it. So yeah, the, the numbers, I guess, speak for themselves. But it's one of many industries, if you like, that still has the ability to leap forward, get ahead, be in, you know, uh, an early trendsetter. Um, yeah, and that's kind of what we found from, from the report. Yeah, and I know we're going to talk about it a little bit later on around, you know, balancing um, sort of cost to make sure you're maintaining that profitability. But the fact is that 68% of, of, of customers would actually pay extra for same day delivery mm. um, as it is, right? So it, the, the, I guess the statistics and facts kind of speak for themselves. Um, Matt, I don't know if you wanted to, to kind of add anything um, around this at all, around what Lush's kind of experience and, 
yeah. uh, and why you kind of, I know we're going to talk about it a little bit later on, but I don't know if there's anything you wanted to kind of point out at this point. I think, it, yeah, I think, you know, that is our, I mean, a lot of our core kind of purchasing is things like gifts and a lot of bath products. So cos although cos we're a cosmetics business, um, kind of our makeup and things like that and kind of skincare and stuff is, is, qu is quite high, but I guess there's less, or there's been a thought of needing less demand on it. Yep. So things like next day has always kind of been enough. Um, and I'd say it's not <laughs> yeah, anymore. I, agree. <laughs> I would say that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, excellent. Thank you very much. Um, so, Matt, you know, I, I'd, I'd love to hear a little bit more, um, not only about, well, I guess about your story initially, because I know you've, you've kind of worked on the, on the retail, on the shop front, and, and now in the role that you're in now. So it'd be great to just, you know, for the audience here to understand, you know, your story at, at last. Yeah, sure. Um, I'm going to try and keep it as short as possible, because otherwise I'll be here for like a three days telling you about my time um, or espousing how wonderful as a business we are. But um, if you haven't ever been into a Lush shop, I highly recommend it. Um, the experiences are incredible. What we offer is, is, is very different, especially when it comes to kind of cosmetics and, and retail like that. Um, I've worked with the business now for 11 years. So I started as a, in retail, so in the management. So worked in a couple of stores, um, worked in our, one of our first stores down in Poole. Um, and then after building up my time there, progressed into um, what we call our customer services. So this was all of the internal logistics and ordering for all the products for the stores to sell. So after being on the shop floor and receiving them in, I was now on the other side and sending them out. Um, and I did that for a good couple of years, worked with kind of launches, so worked with product launches, worked with a lot of our global um, teams as well. So kind of really kind of just, yeah, getting good experience and all that. I then um, kind of moved my services into the digital um, world. So originally starting with um, what we call digital services, but it's effectively an IT team. So I headed up the service side of that for all of our internal. So really getting into kind of technology. Um, I'm quite passionate about it. I think it can provide some um, amazing tools out there. And so I did that for a good couple of years and then got some opportunities to work on some bigger projects around um, digital um, transformation. So we did some um, work with, um, our, uh, with Google to increase licenses for all of our um, staff. So every single member of the Lush business has a license and has access to the same resources, whether you're in head office, um, if you're on the shop floor, if you're part time, you'll have exactly the same accessibility tools. Um, so they did that for a good year, and now I'm um, heading up our stock operations, so with our systems designs. So um, my role is a product lead. So effectively, I look after the squad that is building our internal tools. So we have developers and QA and business analysts and things like that. Um, and we're the ones that are building um, our stock systems, which then got me involved with all of the click and collect and the same day delivery, because it's those systems that are uh, providing the, you know, the, the, the data to be able to do this. Um, so up until this year, we weren't able to view our stock holdings in all of our shops. So we could do estimated, we could kind of get an idea of what it is based on a physical stock check, as well as a kind of the, analyzing the data. So looking at deliveries in, sales out, wastage, things like that. But again, it was only a, a best guess. Now, in order to be offering things like click and collect in the same day, you've got to have that accuracy. You've got to be able to tell your customer, yep, that store definitely has 10 of those. You can order one, you're safe to go. So we're kind of working in a bit of a conjunction. So building out these stock systems, as well as kind of integrating with our partners um, to kind of carry it forward. So this is what spurred on a lot of our stock system, actually. Um, which is great, because that, that was the reason, really, actually was working with yourselves and needing it helped us build the, the system. Yeah, absolutely. So then when we look at ourselves um, kind of as a business, we're very, we're heavily focused on our ethics. Like you can see in there, um, when it comes to demonstrate, our brand values are really, really important to us. Um, our e-commerce platform is on um, an ethical server setup, so it uses green energy. Um, we ensure that anything that we're moving forward with, we're engaging with the right partners to ensure that it aligns with what we believe in, basically. We have a we believe statement, we've got a master plan, um, and we stick with them. Sometimes this makes things very challenging um, because sometimes there's a quicker route or there's a shorter route, um, which someone's already done. However, if it doesn't sit with how we um, believe the world should be, um, 
we'll find our own way, uh, which can be a wee bit stubborn, but um, it's how we are still here today as we are um, as a business. So brand values are really important, which is a challenge when working with partners um, or can be. Uh, we wanted to make sure that our online offering when we do this e-commerce setup with click and collect and same day deliveries, it, it feels as close as possible to coming into store. Now we know that when you come into a shop, you get that kind of five star customer service from the minute you walk in to the minute you leave at the till, you're getting all that kind of aftercare, you're getting all the advice. What we didn't want to happen was it to drop if you were to use kind of a delivery service or a courier, because whoever brings that parcel to your door is representative of Lush. Doesn't matter if they work for a separate courier service, they're, they're an extension of you, and so it comes back to us. So that on-demand fulfillment had to be um, high level. The customer experience had to be branded, so it had to still feel like, as I say, so the driver at the door might have gopher written on their top, but they are still, they're gonna be seen as Lush. They're holding a Lush parcel, they've, they've delivered your delivery. So it's important to make sure that that whole journey is represented. And then impact. We all appreciate the pandemic did a number on many people and made things change really fast. And coming out of that, we didn't wanna lose any momentum that we may have picked up. So the idea of working with, with people like Bring is to make sure that we've got the speed and we keep in that, that, that uh, that speed going basically. Do you want to pop on to the next one? So this is how we did it. So we started this at the beginning of the year um, and we did really move fast with it. <laughs> um, the, these are the kind of the more kind of bullet points to it. But interestingly, um, I was shared an article from Salesforce, which was looking at um, customers. So 80% of customers wanted an experience. That was almost our priority. So the products are important, but the experience is also. So the delivery service is part of that experience. So that's what we wanted to focus on. The concept of omni-channel isn't new, that exists as well. So we wanted to make sure that our retail and our commerce feel united, that they're not competing against one another, they're not stealing from one another, um, and it doesn't feel like there's a, a disconnect. So that was important to make sure that, that stayed on. And so, interestingly, they said that one in three shoppers have researched products online whilst in a store. And I feel like we're a little bit ahead of this because we have something called Lush Lens, which is an app um, that you can use to scan products in store and it will show you what it is um, and how to use it. What we found, again, is for things like um, our customer base is wide, so accessibility around language is important. And then maybe you're in a different country or a different store and you need to kind of communicate, you can use something like an app to scan things. So it's the same idea with um, same day delivery and home services. If you aren't able to leave the house or you can't for any reason, why should you be penalized? These are systems that you can pull in place. So it's not just for like the urgent last minute shopper. There's so many other use cases that like we can identify that will allow us to enhance that customer experience rather than having to come in store to see that. We also, just to note as well, we also came off of um, some major social media platforms. So we have an anti-social policy, um, which means we're not on um, four of kind of the big providers. Um, it was felt that we, our business is about making people relax, disconnect from the world around them, disconnect from technology. And so um, we don't have some of those resources like social media to perhaps spin marketing or make things kind of really, um, kind of fancy using that. So we're using clear, simple systems, going through the website, finding what customers need, and just providing it straight up. And so yeah, I think like, I mean, as I say, our brand values are in there as well. So then these are the three areas that we have focused on, and I think they're the three that have probably seen the most result in. So improving that customer experience, as I say, it's about that consistent access across. When someone orders a product, they don't want to then have to disappear off into other systems to try and follow up what's happening and what's going on. 
Everything is connected to our customer care team. If you have any problems, you can go to them. The really nice thing as well is it's also connected to the store. So if, you, if you're local and you can get to the store at the same time or something's happened, you could speak to them as well about it. So you can follow up a couple of days later or you can ring them and perhaps speak to somebody who you've spoken to before and it just elevates that ability and the real-time updates that are provided as well. We all know there's nothing worse than ordering something and then wondering if it's going to turn up and when and how. And yeah, if you've ordered for same day, you need it. You need it there and then. So you want to know where it's coming and how it's how it's traveling and when it's going to get. I think just just on on that, just to step in, Matt, if I can. I think I think the the customers are that you know, from our perspective, you know, conversations that we have, they're they're very, you know, they want things quickly, but also they just they want to know when it's going to be. It's all about time defined delivery. Yeah. So you don't want to run into the shower problem where you know <laughs> you've got a delivery time slot and you jump in the shower because you think you've got time and guess what that's when the delivery turns up right and that doesn't provide a great experience for customers so I think you know it's a combination of having that urgency plus also knowing when it's going to turn up oh yeah especially with people working from home yeah. more and more nowadays as well especially in the cause I think there's nothing worse than ordering something and. I always think when you, when you give a gift to someone, it's really lovely to hand it to them. So in a way, if you've ordered something for yourself, it's really nice if the delivery driver can hand it to you yeah. rather than just on the doorstep perhaps or just kind of left like behind the bins because you weren't available. So if you are available to receive it, I think for us as a business, that's like an enhancement. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the efficiency was incredible. So we managed to roll out to 50 stores um, I think it was, yeah, just in less than five months. And the majority we hit in bulk. There was a couple of kind of fringe groups, but it was by working with yourselves that we were able to do that because we didn't have to spend copious amounts of time um, engaging with new relationships and setting them up and trialing them out. We got to work with, with Bring to effectively be the leader for us out there and say, right, here's our locations. These are, this is the uh, radius we want to do. What have you got? And then engaging with kind of, I, I guess, yourselves to be like, cool, this is what we can mm. do, this is who we're getting. Absolutely. And we can help define who we'd like to work with as well. So again, as I said previously, we are, um, we're very conscious of our kind of eco solutions. So we can say, look, these are the things we want to prioritize, whether that is local bike deliveries or electric deliveries above others. Now we know there's going to be times where you can't do that, but if we are at least pushing for those solutions, that's important, that sits with what we need. And um, our deliveries are, are coming in, they're great. We, um, at the moment, I'd say, like transparency, we're in a light phase of marketing. It's, it's live on the website, you can see it. We haven't necessarily done massive pushes on kind of communication, but the orders are coming in from customers that are finding it and using it and, and needing it. Um, interestingly, one of our highest is around uh, a London store that is close to a lot of the offices. So you can kind of see how people are perhaps busy in their work day. Um, they've suddenly realized they need a, a gift for that evening or perhaps something's changed. Um, and gifts are in the top for us um, at the moment. So that makes sense. It's that urgency at the moment. Yeah, we, we saw a spike from your products just before Mother's Day. Yes. <laughs> so maybe there's a bit of panic buying there. Classic, isn't Whatever it? the reason, yeah. That sudden reminder of like, it's mm. this Sunday? Yeah. It's this Sunday and you, you, it's Friday, which means you can't get next day delivery probably, um, or it's going to be really limited. So you either give it on Monday or you get it to your house on the Friday to hand over Perfect. ready for, for Mother's Day. That's certainly when it does though, come yeah. uh, time critical, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And yeah. In, you know, when you think of any other kind of seasonal thing, so Christmas, and like we've, you know, we talked about Christmas coming up, there's going to be times where perhaps you do turn up to someone's house or perhaps someone's coming over and they've brought you something nice. Um, there's no reason you couldn't probably organize the same day delivery while they're there. Perhaps distract them, make them a cup of tea, um, put them in the lounge and get that delivery within a couple of hours and just be like, oh yeah, like I had yours ready. Mm. Um, <laughs> Sounds like this actually happens. Yeah, yeah exactly. Say, is too, yeah. Just planning ahead, aren't I? I'm just getting ready for that, that <laughs> urgent moment. Um, but yeah, like the efficiency, as I say, is, is amazing. And then the, the goal of it being a retail business is to grow our revenue. I mean, that makes sense. Like we're not um, shy about saying that we want to raise money as a business. Um, capitalism through and through, but we want to do it in an ethical, sustainable manner. Um, and so this is kind of the way we've, we've looked at doing it. Excellent. Thanks, Matt. No, it's, uh yeah, it's 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 a it's a great sort of journey that you've certainly been on, you know, at Lush, but both from a from a personal perspective, you know, working on, you know, at, at, in in the storefront, you know, right the way up to the role that you're in now, right? So that that's given you the ability to actually know, yeah, 
speak to customers, know what they want at a store level, and then being able to to, to kind of use that experience to what you do today. So yeah, uh, I, th I think it's interesting as well on that. Is, as you, we've talked a lot about data yeah. and how it can be a challenge to sometimes quantify a lot of this. And I think as a business, although it's important to be able to quantify it to a level, some of it is just engaging with it and trusting the experience and trusting that what you're doing is, is right for your customer. If your customers are asking for it or they're requesting it or they're finding you know, that the opportunity is lacking, like, I feel like you just got to jump in yep. and just like kind of, the great thing is when we're working together is that we're adapting as we go as well. Like this isn't a package that just is like, here you go, off you go. Mm. This is learning as we go and going, okay, that works, this doesn't, okay, let's try this, let's try that. And I think that's one of the beauty of like, of building out like what we're doing. And that's what we do as a business. We're very much like, try, try this here. Yep. What's it do? You know, let's see how that goes. And with yeah. all that, I guess, comes data, right? Yeah. So even exploring same day, even tapping into th to that space is how far away are they? What products move quickly? What do you need more of? You know, what, how quickly do they want it? What are they willing to pay? Um, and you really learn that through exploration, right? Yeah. Yeah, and, and there's, there's different needs based on different locations within the UK as well, right? Oh, you know. yeah. And, that, and that's the thing with <coughs> very much focusing on what the communities need individually yep. so different like you know london is a very different retail environment sure. from inverness yeah so but if we can at least kind of set some good like base levels with our partners we can then adapt the pieces that we need and one can compensate the other yeah absolutely excellent so like, I, th there's kind of three, I guess, kind of key questions and th three kind of key things I wanted to, to, to make sure we had some time to discuss today. So uh, there is a balance, right, that, that we've, you know, we've, we, I guess we kind of touched on between, uh, you know, meeting customers' expectations, but, but doing it in a cost efficient and, you know, operationally efficient way. Um, Graham, I'd love to hear your thoughts around, you know, some of the things that you're seeing around getting that balance right and, and that customers are, you know, making sure that they're able to deliver what their customers want, but also not taking a huge hit on their profit. Yeah, I think the biggest thing for us is what value does same day bring? If it gives you the gift of time, <laughs> if it stops you having to go out or go to a store, if it saves your bacon when you forgot a certain <laughs> person's birthday, whatever those reasons are, then... It kind of there are, there are ways to claw that money back if you like whether it's in sure. the purchase whether the user the consumer is willing to, to spend on that but yeah as you can see there it is a premium service it does cost more but I think if positioned and built correctly you can build that value in yep. and we've seen it already every single day if you're buying a same day service or if you if you're choosing that you end up spending more in the shop mm. you make that purchase of a same day delivery kind of a, blend into your basket, right? So yep. you kind of hide it in there. So people are spending more for speed. And we yep. see that every single day. So obviously it would be easy for me to say that. But yes, so there's an acknowledgement, yes, it does cost more. But I think the value that it adds outweighs that increase in cost. And then it really is a retailer, it's up to you. Do you want to subsidize any of that we've got a lot of cases where retailers do to attract market share to it you know to, to move forward in that space you've got some that pass it on at cost and you've got some that try to monetize it as well but again these are all things you can learn as you go yeah, if absolutely. you're offering the service but again matt and i were talking about that value add for yeah, same day and, and i think you could probably position that better than i from a retail perspective yeah and i think it, it does all come down to what is it what is it worth to the individual? And it's the same, you know, being on the shop floor, um, I remember selling moisturizers and our prices varied um, way back then. But, you know, kind of, you could go from 10 pounds, I think, to 40 pounds. Well, you'd get some people who look at 10 pound and think that's, you know, the height of what they can do and some people are 40. It's yep. the thing I've always been taught, you know, never shop with your own wallet, and like with your own pocket in mind, never like kind of sell to people. Um, so don't dismiss the willingness of people to pay for something in those situations and yep. it's like you said it's we i was looking at some of the the, de the data that we've got at the moment and like average sale is around 33 pounds on, on average across them all so um and so our cost for delivery is around about a quarter of that so and we were saying earlier like i probably wouldn't spend 2.99 on a five pound purchase for delivery if I was spending £50 on a product, £2.99 seems like nothing. So if at Christmas I'm buying a £100 gift or a collection of gifts for my friends and I'm paying maybe a tenth of, you know, 10% yeah. of that's going to be a same-day delivery charge, 
and I don't have to go out, and I don't have to wrap them because they're already pre-wrapped because they look beautiful. I was like, the value starts stacking up, and I think yeah. when we get to the point of communicating with customers, that's what it's going to be about. And then we're very transparent when it comes to our delivery options as well. Mm. So they're just listed, and they explain exactly what it is, what you're going to get, and the price you're going to get it for. Yeah. Yeah. I guess it'd be interesting to see how the balance starts to weigh out, because if you are spending more with a, an organization, you almost feel like you should get an addition, a better service because you're, yeah. so if you're spending a hundred pounds, why isn't same day delivery yeah. included in that, yep. right? So, that, so there's, there's, a, there's a balance between the two, I think. I mean, we, we, this year we've just launched our delivery pass. Yep. So you sign up, you pay and you get free delivery for the year, which is yep. quite common for a lot of other people. We've just got to the point of reaching that. As you say, when the data comes in around the same day, there might be some real good opportunities that we can pass on to customers yeah. um, and give them those additional savings and encourage. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Also worth noting as well, we, we are seeing the costs of same day continue to fall as more and more retailers enter the space. It creates this ecosystem for couriers to, to operate in a high street and work with multiple retailers, which you know, volume will bring the prices down, whether that's with one retailer or as, or as part of an ecosystem. But it's definitely coming down, yeah. which is exciting as well. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Nice. And you know, I know that, that Lush has, and we, we partner with Gopher very you know, closely on this, you know, there was an element of speed to market, right? Being able to get up and set up as quickly as possible, especially as you know, COVID started to hit and just wanting to get the project going, you know, and through through Bring, we're able to offer this this one touch where you know the, the, the negotiations, the contracts have already been sort of pre predefined and pre negotiated, so you can literally just a turnkey service, right? Yeah. So, um, Matt, I'd love to hear from you on how that kind of helped you to get up and running quickly, and how important that was yeah. for you as well. I think I I think f like based on talking with the team that kind of were mainly implementing all of this. It was not needing to have expert knowledge in that field of logistics yep. and couriers, like which you could probably spend, well, you probably have spent years well, like learning yeah. and, and studying. So really? at Lush, we often, we are, as I say, I've said before, we're kind of stubborn when it comes to things. However, when there's time sensitive or we need to rely on expert skill sets, then we search for a partner. Yep. Then we go out there and look and go, well, okay, do we, do we pick someone who is, do we go with a single user and kind of you know put our connection into that and see what comes or are there other options and this is where i think you know the, the mm. solution with bring yep. is is great for us because we have this variety and we can build a partnership we can now work together and go here's our challenge okay you offer this brilliant when you build it up yep. whereas sometimes i think if it's just a single provider sometimes you you could be a bit stuck potentially or it might not be what we need because it's very new territory for us yep. um i think it just gives so much more Flexibility, opportunity, security, yeah. all of those things that you want. But I think I think it's important to, as you say, you know, get going, yeah. right? Because yeah. that's the only way that you're gonna be able to start collecting the data, see what customers actually want yeah. is to is to is to start, right? And I think that's that's where some customers uh, you know, or retailers have, have kind of struggled in the past. Oh yeah. I th and yeah, that's the thing I would say if like when you're considering it, is just jump in. It's absolutely terrifying, don't, don't get me wrong. I'm a, I'm a massively risk averse person, which means having me as a product lead maybe doesn't always work. But um, the one thing Lush has taught me is just, like, just jump in, adapt and, and work with it. And if you set up yourself with good partners, you're gonna be in good hands effectively because they're there to guide and, and kind of you know, help you along the way. Um, but yeah, definitely jump yeah. in. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> absolutely. Graham, is there anything you wanted to? I know the, the partnership with Gopher was was, was key to yeah. getting these guys up and running as quickly as possible. So I don't know if I there's anything you wanted to add as well. The one key add for us is, is coverage, I think. There's been a history with Same Day that it should be very London-centric or it should be very city-centric. Sure. Centric, but I think one of the things we, we were able to offer, Lush, through you guys, was we can build this for the many, right? Not the few. Mm -hmm. So if you are a retailer with multiple stores in many, many locations, then we can create something together that then we replicate and build and we spread. So everyone understands the proposition. Everyone knows what it costs, what the expectations are. Yep. And we offer it just to so many more people. And I yep. think working together with you guys, with you know your facilities and your stores, it was like, yeah, this is going to fly and it's going to fly very quickly. Yep. So yeah, coverage is really, really key because y you guys want to invest time and money and effort and resource yep. into something that travels as well. Yep. Otherwise, it becomes a bit conceptual, right? You want it to be an actual value add for everyone. So that's what we try to do. Yeah. And I think, as you say, with that, 
that reach. At the moment, we're focused on the UK and Ireland because that's where our currently our technology is. But we do want to put it in every store. There's no reason why this can't go everywhere. Yep. So working with partners that have that capacity already makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Because once we've got it sorted, we'll just we'll fly around the globe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exciting, yeah, exciting stuff. Um, we've mentioned customer experience, you know, a, a, a couple of times. What, what other, Matt, what, what other innovations are you kind of seeing in the market that's, that, that's having a real impact on, on customer experience, both, I guess, within Last Mile and, and maybe some thoughts yeah. around outside of that as well? I mean, I think, uh, yeah, I guess my, my experiences aren't too deep in kind of like the alternatives, but I know kind of that it is more about engaging that experience. So in the last couple of years, our innovation has brought forward things like um, subscription boxes, all things that we've never been able to do before. So subscription boxes, personalization, fresh and flowers. So fresh and flowers is something that is made on the one day and then it's delivered straight away. If we can be adding like the last mile concept yep. and things like that, that's how it should be because it needs to be put in a fridge. Yep. So it needs to leave the warehouse in the morning and arrive with customers in the evening somehow. Yeah. So that's what we pride ourselves on is fresh handmade as our business and that's why we're unlike others that's where the challenges lie so i think it sounds a bit big-headed doesn't it to be like the innovation's coming from inside but <laughs> when i observe like what our business wants to do often our creators our designers our innovators what they want to create is about three steps ahead of maybe what is out there logistically sure. so the challenge that we're doing here is is achieving that, right? It's putting yeah. it on on people like yourselves and going, cool, so we want to do this really like crazy thing. Yeah. Can we do it? And you're yeah. like, of course you're going to go, yeah. yeah. Well, sure, why not? Yeah, we'll find a way. Um, you, t you turn up on the, the doorstep and go, I'd carry it. Yeah. Um, <coughs> and so, you know, there, there is that with the, the experience on it. I think also, same day is not the most newest concept. There are big companies out there that are doing it but we want to do it in a way that is sustainable and that is focused on kind of that eco aspect. So um, electric powered vehicles, bikes and things like that. Sure. I think that's the territory that I find most interesting in yeah. terms of like the innovative bit of it, of going, well, hang on, like you're not just focusing on speed. That's important. However, it's also the experience of that parcel, the experience that their yep. customer feels, that they know, you know, the contribution of what they're doing either to you know, reducing the carbon emissions, things like that. Yep. Yeah. So I think they're the important things. Yeah, absolutely. I think, I think it's, it's also making sure that you're staying focused on, as you start to add, you know, cool, innovative technology is why are you doing that? What's the strategy? How does that align to your goals and your strategies, what it is that you're looking to achieve? Otherwise, it's just, you know, implementing cool technology, which actually doesn't have an impact on anything. Yeah, it's always tying it back. Yeah, absolutely. Graham, anything to, anything to add on the, on the customer experience? I mean, customer experience, people want transparency. You, yeah. It doesn't have to be fast. Same day is fast by its nature. That's that's just a byproduct of it. But actually, one of the biggest things it offers up is certainty. Yep. Things aren't getting lost. Things aren't getting misread. Things aren't going missing. It goes from A to B pretty directly, yep. pretty cleanly. And you can see that, feel that. And you can follow that journey if you wish, and many, many people do. So I think that in itself is a great experience. Yeah. One of the things we try to work with Gopher is in the courier experience as well. They play a big part in this journey, and, and they're, they're not really talked of hugely. But if we look after the couriers, yep. make sure they're well compensated, well presented, we give them good technology so, to support them, if we make them really happy as well, then actually you guys get a really good experience because the courier's on time. Yes. He's punctual, you get good reviews, you have that feeling. So I think courier experience and customer experience kind of go hand in hand. Yeah, absolutely. So from our perspective as a, as a final mile provider, it's really key for us to make sure we look after them yep. because then they'll look after you. Yep. Right? Yeah, yep. no, that makes sense. I'm keen to make sure that we um, discuss something that's I know pretty pretty key to, to Lush. Um, I know that we've seen you know some there's there's, there's some some significant kind of statistics out there around you know retail as you know as e-commerce grows that it's going to start to you know increase by 33 percent you know carbon emissions by by 2025. So it's going to as these things start to ramp up, it's going to have start to have a significant impact. And we know that a lot of different businesses are doing some some fantastic things and and bring we can we can help organise to to make sure that they're delivering things in the most efficient way or giving customers you know eco-friendly delivery options um, I, I just wanted to make sure I'm, I'm just kind of conscious of time I know that 
um, Lush has a you know a big you know a big yes. uh, focus on this, right? Yeah. And, and yeah. based on really at the heart of what it is that you guys do. So I wanted to make sure that Matt, you had some time to talk about some of the some of the things that that Lush is doing from a sustainability perspective. Yeah. So I think you know we're constantly reviewing how we operate as a business, especially as a global business. Um, transportation costs and like the damage it can do to the environment is huge. We work with fresh ingredients. That's another challenge. As I say, we kind of set ourselves up to uh, make things even harder <laughs> for us as a business. But, um, you know, we want to change the world. One of the, our, um, the campaigns that we work on is um, leave the world lusher than you found it. So it's trying to make things better as you go along. So when we start to look at things like last mile, where there's risks of increases, like you've said, of kind of like damage around kind of the globe, um, what we're looking at here is how we can lower it. So things like delivery batching is a great solution of kind of putting those orders together. So we're trying to look at now of how do we put in timelines and dates for customers that allow us to group things to then be delivered out for them. Um, the optimization of routes, um, yes, of routes and cities, really, really important. Um, one of the things as well is the distance. That's a massive one for us. As I say, our warehouse is down in the south. Um, so one of my team worked out that the trip from Poole to Brayhead in Glasgow is going to be about 460 miles of transport. Um, that probably doesn't include left and right. I think that's just straight up. <laughs> um, whereas if we did last mile delivery from the shop, that's only 4.9 miles. Yep. So you're going from like 400 miles to four. So like instantly, I mean, I, I'm sure there's someone in here who can work out quick percentages, but um, I'm not going to try, but you can see the drop. Yeah. So by sending it through our stores and using those capabilities, and at the moment we're only looking at same day, like that's what we're doing through the website, same day delivery, things like that. By doing this and looking at these technologies and expanding and increasing, we can look at other areas, like what other sources, when we buy in products from around the UK, from our suppliers, can we almost do the reverse of a last mile? And right. like, it's the first mile, like, does it, you know, does it work that way around sort of For thing? Sure. So yeah, it's, it's important and it's at the top of it. And I think as a business, what we do is we also push and pressure our partners to adhere to it as well and explore. Yeah. And I think it works both ways of being like um, kind of working together to keep it going. Otherwise, we just become a bit of a nagging company. Like we're a campaigning company. We like to kind of, you know, try and change things and disrupt status quos. And sometimes people can feel like that we're just the annoying rebel in the corner. But when we bring partners on board who also see value in it as well, you start to build a community that is really kind of set on making change and positive change. Sure. Um, and then, yeah, maintaining businesses, yeah. keeping the business sustainable as well as the planet. Yeah, absolutely. Both at the same time. That's uh, it's exciting. I know. I know something that's that, that's certainly important to to Lush. So it's uh, it's great to hear. You know, some of the some of the great work that you're doing from a sustainability perspective as well. Um, you know. I've really enjoyed the conversation today. Um, hope everyone else has uh, in, in the crowd. Um, I, I don't know if you, if you guys wanted to kind of wrap with some, uh, some kind of key takeaways. Um, okay. Anything you kind of wanted to highlight at the end of the conversation at all? Yeah, just for me, it's a very simple why not, right? Why not explore it? Why not go on that journey to see if you have any customers there and a store there, rather than doing the 400 mile journey, let's connect them, let's connect the dots. Uh, and just, just explore the solution, find what works for you. Yep. And I think we're really, really keen to, to hear what kind of whys there might be in the room um, to why you might offer the service, but we'll certainly work with you to try and, to try and make it um, come true. So yeah, that's for me. Excellent. Nice. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna, <laughs> the thing that came to my mind was something <coughs> someone told me years and years ago, and it sounds really cheesy. So I won't finish on the actual quote, but um, they always said, dig where there are carrots. So that whole thing of, you know, wherever the success is, start there. So if your customers are wanting it, which they do for us, if we've got stores out there that can offer it, why are we not using them all? And it ties really nicely into that why not. It's like dig where there are carrots and why not go the whole way and just, you know, pull them all up and sell okay. them and make nice things from it. Nice. Excellent. <laughs> Good. Well, thank, thank you both for your time today. I think we're, uh, we're yeah. bang on time. So nice. uh, I think we're, unfortunately, we don't have any time for questions in this session today, but you guys are at stand. Yeah, we've got a stand. I'll be around yeah, up um, for two days. So yeah, feel yeah free. We, bo we both got stands here. So if you have any follow-up subsequent questions, then please feel free to, to come over to the stand. But uh, really appreciate everyone joining today. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much.